Welcome to 2024 Eclipse Day. This is exciting. Meteorologist Terry Ellison, executive weather producer here with Jason Michael, my buddy, morning meteorologist. How are you? I'm doing great. All right. This is exciting. I'm so excited. So uh, just to start off, you, you're sitting here right now. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. You're doing the noon show, but you're still thinking you're going to head up and give this a go. You know, I, I looked at my gas needle and I said, I think I can do this. Yeah. Just I, punch it. I'm just going to punch it. I got the bag of clothes in the car. I'm going to change before I get before I leave after the noon show and I'm just gonna head north I mean I, I'm guessing you might hit a little traffic although maybe a lot of folks are already there right I mean you know I got the turbo boosters back there it's, gonna be, <laughs> it's, it's like the DeLorean aka Volvo <laughs> well this is exciting I mean again this is the only solar if you're if you're a solar eclipse fan or even if you're not this is your one chance in Boston or at least the Boston area until 2079 so it's it's kind of today or nothing um, but I think a lot of folks have already headed up north so yeah. Obviously, let's talk first about the forecast. Yeah, the forecast has been kind of interesting. Like earlier this morning when I was on air, I was talking about my experience in Texas because we have Jacob down in Texas. We have Eric down in Texas. Uh, we're also going to have Alyssa stationed in the Midwest. And it's kind of interesting, like where they all are is kind of where I've worked and had experience working at in the past. So even oh, statistically, I mentioned this morning and I have love for the CLE. <laughs> it's always cloudy there. So, I mean, I kind of expected it to be cloudy okay. there. But statistically, in, in, uh, in Texas, especially for this time of year, mainly sunny skies. So we have two systems that we're going to be watching that could likely hamper some of the visibility. But at least for us, that shield of cloud cover will likely stay at bay through about 3, 3.30. So it could be fairly interesting as we start to work in a little bit more clouds once we get to about 4 and 5 p.m. this afternoon. But at least as of this note, it's expected to be high clouds. Yeah, you can see uh, on our satellite imagery on our maps um, that the little wispies that are out, you can see them just near Ottawa, Burlington. Those are the high, thin cirrus clouds that we've been talking about for the last couple of days. And um, the stuff off to the west, um, that that's more low to moderate. Cloud. We're not expecting that to, to hamper the show. A lot here, of so. mucky muck over there. Yeah. So. The question is just how much cirrus does get involved and how thick is it? I mean, usually with these high thin cirrus shields, mm -hmm. you can s see through them a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So that's the hope I think today is that, you know, even if we do get some clouds in, it's of the very high variety, those high ice crystals, and you can still see the show right through the clouds, hopefully. And also the good thing is the biggest peak energy source, the sun, Likely, hopefully, it will make it through some of those clouds there. Exactly, that's the hope. Um, but temperature, I mean, it really couldn't be, after all the all the terrible weather we've had here <laughs> in New England, um, temperatures today, low 60s, southern New England, and then the 50s up in the path of the totality. Listen, I have to tell you, Terry, at least for a southern guy like me, seeing 50s and 60s, I'm ready to take off all my clothes and just run around. <laughs> well, oh, after, well, well that, I would just say, let me just preface, after all we had last week with the nor'easter, the 30s and the 40s, some ice, some snow, 50s and 60s for this time of year and a day like today when we're having like this big major event, you just want to go put on a t-shirt and shorts. And well, just... I, interesting. So I want to go where you're going. It sounds like a party. <laughs> Wherever Jason's going, uh, it sounds it's like gonna it's going to be a party. Lovely. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but seriously, uh, again, given the fact that we haven't really even seen the full-fledged sunshine in days, the fact that it's coming mm -hmm. today is quite a treat. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, mid-50s up there uh, in totality. If you're down here and in, you're in your office in Boston, you want to step outside just before 3.30, uh, it's going to be great. Low 60s, yeah. uh, maybe a little bit of high cloudiness. But I get the feeling that at like 3.20, everyone's going to just kind of step outside. They're going to descend. It's, it's like a once-in-a-lifetime kind of event. Everybody just steps outside their office and looks yeah. up. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And even for the managers, apologize if people do not go back into the office and complete the workday. They're still going to be very excited about that. But I also had some uh, viewers like, uh, messaged me this morning on mm. Facebook and Instagram asking, okay, I live in Boston or I live in, let's say, Lemonster. Where's the base place to view it if I live in the city? Well, hopefully some place where you have unobstructed views of the sky. You'll, you'll still have a good chance of viewing it. But even in Boston, where well, we have a 93% chance of seeing maximum uh, eclipse once it moves to, I think, 3, 3, 329 is the time that it will happen here in Boston. So just go outside, have an unobstructed view. It's not like seeing the ISS at nighttime where you have the light pollution mm. from the city. You'll still be able to see this. It just all depends on the cloud cover. Yeah, so actually I think, um, so our buddy Jacob Wyckoff is down, in, last I heard, he was in the Dallas area heading just northwest. Um, I don't know, Jacob, if we have you, would love to get a uh, little bit of an update as to where you're at and what, what are you thinking forecast-wise down there? 
area still. I am just to the northwest in Grapevine. Uh, this is Grapevine Lake right here. And it's a beautiful spot that my family and I, we've kind of picked out. My wife's uncle lives in Flower Mound, which is like, like 30 seconds away from where I am right now. And we've been really pouring over the models uh, the last really week uh, since some of these uh, longer range models came out and now shorter range models. And we're expecting the clouds that are pretty thick right now to start to thin out as we go into the next really couple of hours. By noontime or so, uh, we should start to see these breaking up quite a bit. And that's gonna be the good thing uh, because right now we started out with some sunshine and the cloud deck from the south has moved in and then these will burn off. Uh, as Terry was mentioning, we had the possibility of going to either Oklahoma or even further out to Arkansas or Southern Missouri, but we decided to kind of just plant it right here and kind of roll the dice, do the best we can with, uh, with, with the skies that are given to us at the moment. Um, so if, you're, if you want to follow along here in Texas where I am, 140 is when we expect totality. We are in the path of totality here. Um, we're just to the northwest of DFW Airport. And uh, it's been, boy, it has been one of the toughest forecasts of my career. You know, in New England, we forecast snow, some seasons more than others, like this past season, not so much. But this has been one of the toughest forecasts because you're uh, really forecasting a point in time for a specific location in time. And a lot rides on it because it's not like you have another shot at doing this. It's basically a make or break forecast. And so that's the gamble. And so we're gambling. We're staying right here. Wow, it, it looks awfully cloudy and it sounds awfully windy. Uh, <laughs> not what you would expect um, in April in Texas, hence why, er so Eric and Jacob both made the trip down to Texas because climatologically speaking, it was the highest odds of having a nice day. Mm -hmm. um, but Jacob, I, 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 I wish you the best, but those clouds behind you look awfully ominous. <laughs> they, so this is exactly what the forecast called for though. We're gonna have these clouds roll in from the south and then as we start to kind of mix out a little bit with the atmosphere, drier air starts to spill on in. And so by about 11.30, so about 90 minutes from now, we expect the skies to clear. And we're, what we're expecting is to have a thin veil of clouds in place for 140. Uh, I don't expect fully sunny blue skies, but I do expect there to be the high clouds. These low clouds, they gotta get out of here, otherwise we have no shot. Uh, but this is exactly how the forecast was kind of playing out, that the thick clouds would be around in the morning and then they're out of here by midday. And I remember Jacob, you know, looking at these clouds behind you, uh, when I worked down in Texas, one of the things that sort of like adds to the threat of the severe weather down there is the breaks in the clouds. So the breaks in the clouds down there yeah. will likely allow for a great viewing of the eclipse, but it will also allow for a stronger threat of severe weather to happen. And I'm already looking at radar and seeing what's happening over in Louisiana. And it just takes a linchpin to unplug, and then you get those storms to pop. Well, let's hope that, I mean, that is part of the forecast today as well. So, um, you know, we hope for the clearing skies, but not too much fuel to get the thunderstorms popping. Um, Jacob, we'll probably hear from you a little later on. I hope, I hope we get some great pictures from you as well for our 5 o'clock news. Thank you guys, appreciate that. And Jason, you hit the nail on the head. One thing that I told my wife, I've never seen a tornado before. Imagine if you see a total solar eclipse and then later this evening, we get a big hail or tornado storm. I mean, I'm, I'm calling the end it. end of days. That, that would Boy. be like, I could die a happy man. I would, I would die a happy man at that point. <laughs> All right, well, thanks, Jacob. Good luck. Um, we will be in touch as the day goes on. Um, but we have another reporter standing by. We do. We have Mike Sullivan. He's going to provide some information for us. Mike, where are you stationed? What are you seeing? How excited are you? Set the stage, my friend. Go ahead. We are in sunny Lancaster, New Hampshire, and the hope is that it stays that way. No clouds, so everyone can see it here. We are at the fairgrounds in Lancaster. It's 20 bucks to park here, put your car, be able to see the eclipse. People have been lining up here since about 9 o'clock this morning, even though the doors here opened as early as in the morning. The eclipse will start here around 2.50 to hit total, somewhere shortly before 3.30. Our location in Lancaster, which is really 
Most of the totality line, we're expecting somewhere between 40 to 50 seconds of totality here, where the sun will be blocked by the moon. Uh, if you're in different parts of our area, or even toward Vermont, like Burlington, Burlington should have almost around three minutes of totality, a lot more than here. That's sort of the hot band where a lot of people are heading. Vermont, their state officials are telling people in the area to expect about 200,000 visitors coming. And if they're coming to the area, you can only assume they're going to that totality area. So if you're going to Burlington, uh, Stowe, those areas are places that are hotbeds for people to go. Traffic might be very difficult if you're making a late rush up there to get there. And if you are trying to stay overnight tonight because you didn't book anything, good luck. Within an hour of Burlington, a lot of those areas are already booked up. Days ago, Stowe, Vermont had 99% occupancy for these days as it was going. Here in Lancaster, you can still get a spot to come here and enjoy the eclipse. And if you do, bring your eclipse glasses because that's the only way you're going to be able to see this up until totality. At totality, during that time, you can take these off and look at the sun briefly. But I talked to some optometrists and they say the idea with the glasses is to put them on late and take them off early because if the sun is peeking out at all, you could damage your eyes. So it's okay to be a little bit late when you're putting them on and put them on a little bit early. Now, if you're in Massachusetts, keep them on the entire time. You will not hit totality, so some of the rays will come through and can damage your eyes. And we're gonna be here for the next several hours up until totality, talking to people and trying to figure out what they're looking forward to. Back to you guys. That's exciting. I mean, uh Lancaster's going to get, I think it's something between 40 and 50 seconds of totality, but I'm telling you, it's 40 or 50 seconds of life-changing time. It's, a, it's not much, but um, you know, it's worth the trip. Uh, so many people are like, they're going to talk about this for years and years and years because it is essentially going to be a once-in-a-lifetime event. I, we also need to sort of point out, too, like as, as Mike was just saying, a lot of people are going to be sort of going to these destinations to view these places make sure that your car has enough fuel mm. make sure that you also kind of planned out what you're going to eat because i'm sure a lot of the restaurants are going to be packed up too and as you got, grab your glasses i remembered something too so you remember the uh solar eclipse that happened in 2017 i was in ohio then and i still have my glasses yes you can reuse the approved ah, solar eclipse glasses from okay. years past uh very interesting and so uh, I got a question this morning from, believe it or not, from my wife, as if she, uh, that's all I've been talking about is the eclipse. And she says today, uh, is, is it okay if I just look up real quick because I don't have glasses? Oh. No, it's not. <laughs> I said, are you kidding me? You can, no, it's looking at the sun. You can't do that. Yeah. And so I know a lot of like my son's high school is pushing practice back a couple hours yeah. because they're afraid that, that kids will be like apt without the glasses to take a quick look. And you really right. shouldn't. You really yeah. Please do not. And I think the good thing is a lot of schools are letting kids out early too. Mm. Even locally, they're letting kids out a little bit earlier. So again, check on that as well. Um, just to remind everybody, so again, maximum eclipse for Boston will happen at 3.29 p.m. And as Terry said earlier, a lot of people perhaps are probably gonna go outside a little bit earlier, maybe around 3 p.m. or so. That is totally fine. But again, make sure you have your glasses, okay? Just go ahead and put them on a little bit early. Let your eyes adjust to them. Yes, and speaking of glasses, um, Alyssa Andrews, another one of our uh, cohorts here, friends at, at WBZ, is in Indianapolis, her hometown, for this event. And she has an interesting story to tell about glasses this morning. <laughs> Alyssa, I hope, are you with us? I am. Hey, guys. Can you hear me? How are you? We got you. Okay, great. Yeah, I did actually just get back home. I'm in I'm in Indianapolis, just south of Indy, uh, where I grew up. I'm at my parents' home, so I can actually see the eclipse in totality. Their house is in totality. And actually, right on the, the center line, we realized that we'd only get, like, an extra one or two seconds of totality, so we're staying put right here. Um, but, yeah, I did just get back home from the store. We had a last-minute trip, um, and... An unnamed member of the household uh, did purchase some Eclipse glasses, but upon further inspection, they were not real. So I did the mad dash oh, no. uh, to Meyer this morning. Yeah, there was, you know, because I remember the 2017 Eclipse, you couldn't find these glasses anywhere. I ended up paying a lot of money, actually, to, to get some last minute that were real. And I think I got them from my optometrist uh, last time. And so, yeah, looking at the, because, you know, anyone can put that ISO logo on the corner. But, um, yeah, picked some up for the whole fan, the whole crew is here. Uh, my grandparents are coming. i um, going to drop some off to my brother. So we got the real stuff. It's a whole family affair. <laughs> I love it. 
Oh, uh, people the in Indiana, there there's in Indiana like watch place. parties. People are already out, you know, blocking off the parking lots, pay, having it, – it's, it's, people are, are really taking advantage of it over here. It might be like St. Patrick's Day celebrating over here. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Similar to South Boston, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. <laughs> What's the forecast, Alyssa, in Indy? Uh, looks pretty good by the time. So right now what I'm seeing, oh, there's been some contrails outside of that. Eh, fine. Uh, maybe some high cirrus clouds could give us – some issue make it look a little hazy but it should be pretty good here um we'll be in the low to mid 70s during totality so we've got a kestrel with us we'll see how much the temperature drops during totality we get just over four minutes um and we should be good to go we did have we were kind of joking on the way here we're like oh we could storm chase the day before i heard, I heard jacob talking about that as well how <laughs> hey you could get could get a two just for like one a meteorologist. um and yeah. there actually was a was, was there a tornado warning over in illinois yesterday yeah yeah so we could we we ended up we, we were spending time with the family we were spending good quality time because like you know we came here because it's my parents house so um trying to trying to get get some good family time in and so um but we did we did get both but luckily i was kind of glad that we had those storms yesterday because i'm like that means we're gonna have some better weather for today yeah that, that mm. sounds like good timing there in indy maybe a little bit better timing than the areas down in texas today unfortunately yeah. but, i can't uh, even believe it well thanks Alyssa. Yeah, Alyssa, hopefully we'll send us back some pictures and we'll share them with everybody tonight at five but uh, enjoy the show Alyssa. Thanks. It's going to be a good one here. I think we, we are totally lucking out in Indiana. Awesome. Fingers crossed. So um, she brought up an interesting point. Like if you're actually in the path of totality, like temperatures actually do tend to dip a little bit. Like just mm -hmm. for those three or four minutes, mm -hmm. the light, obviously it goes from night, uh, from daytime to night. Temperatures will dip a little bit. And, and e there's even the possibility that the clouds will, dis will disperse a little bit because the daytime heating goes away for a few minutes. Absolutely. It's almost like going from day to night and again, like in a matter of seconds. You know, my, I, was, so I was on the phone with my dad. You know my daddy. You know he's kind of crazy. So he was telling me that it is extremely cloudy there in Mississippi. Um, and I can only imagine once the totality happens, specifically speaking, let's say San Antonio, for instance, it's already overcast skies. You add some rain on there and the total solar eclipse is still happening. It will literally probably look like midnight. Yeah, I bet. It's, it's yeah. going to be wild. Yeah. We did get a question there. You guys are seeing I-95 right now. You see a lot of traffic heading north. We did get a question about... Um, Lois asked, should we keep our pets inside for the duration of the eclipse? I personally think it's fine. I mean, like, I, if I was staying here in Boston, I would take Pepper out. Animals are not going to know what's happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> They're not going to be out looking at the sunshine like that. But, you know, it's a family affair, as we were joking with Alyssa. If you're out... Take the pets out. Have a great day. We got great weather, sunny skies. Look at this traffic, though. I-93 in Hooksit, New Hampshire. Um, are you sure you want to drive up there today? Buddy? I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> Maybe I'll go in Sky Eye. Maybe I'll go in a chopper. There you go. This, this is, these are picks from Sky Eye. You should have jumped in earlier. You could have been halfway up there. <laughs> um, that is crazy, although not all that unexpected. So if you're, if you're sitting at home right now in the Boston area thinking about driving up, just take a look at those pictures mm -hmm. and maybe... Uh, I might maybe, end up doing traffic at five. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean a live, live traffic report with Jason Michael. I want to show you on, on our graphic system, if we can, like the, there, the difference between 100% totality, which is what all these folks are trying to, to get to, and like Boston, say 93%, or yeah. most of the rest of the area, 94, 95%. It's really a difference between day and night. You would, yeah. you would, you would think, um, again, that uh, these... You know, your 99% is close enough. Well, not. it's really not. You really need to get to 100% totality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even, you know, I was joking this morning. 95%, again, not that bad. But again, that 5%, it is remarkable how much difference will occur. That's right. We're, and for our producers, we're on max two. The source is max two for those graphics. Um, FYI, for the solar eclipse graphics. But any other good questions on Facebook coming in? Is it better to be at a place with open skies like the beach? Absolutely. I mean, if you can see the sunshine, just go where you can see the sunshine. I mean, don't look at it, again, without the solar eclipse glasses. Mm -hmm. But again, an unobstructed view, unobstructed view of the sky. Again, it's easy peasy. That's going to be the Yeah, best. this is not one of those situations where, like, if for, like, an international space station view, and you need, like, a horizon view. Like, the sun yeah. is going to, I mean, again, it's happening in the afternoon. As long as you, as long as the sun is within view and you got the glasses, um, it's worth a look. And again, in the Boston area, you might think, ah, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a big deal. I still say, get, put the glasses on, yeah. take a look, because you're going to see the moon covering, you know, 93% 
of the sun. And that's something that it's just a very rare occasion. It's, it's worth taking a peek. And it'll be better to talk about people enjoying it rather than a lot of the hospital vi visits going over the optometrist and things. No doubt. Okay? Because no doubt. people didn't do what they're supposed to be doing. So again, just to recap for those joining us, uh, the forecast for today, some high clouds, but yep. overall one of the better days we've had in some, quite and some time. And upper 50s? low 60s and even some mid 60s expected today as well. So again, Mother Nature is working in our favor here. I, th I don't think like we've had a really nice, beautiful day like this since Easter. It really has been that long. I it's been it's such been a rough stretch here. Yeah. Um, and again, that's maybe a, a, a podcast for another day, or <laughs> but um, because sadly it looks like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, yeah. more rain. So we need to really enjoy, the point is, yeah. we need to really enjoy today while really it's happening. Today. For the sunshine, for the warmth, and for the eclipse. Exactly, um, exactly. So and, again, if you're, if you're watching, if you're just tuning in right now, shout out your questions. Let us know where you guys are. We have on the graphics sort of like where the temperatures are going to be sort of uh, it be forecasted for the path of totality, but also again, surrounding areas, mid to low 60s in some parts, up upper 50s and other parts, other than just dealing with some high clouds here in Boston, thicker clouds are going to happen farther west. Um, we do have two meteorologists, our chief meteorologist, Eric Fisher, he's in uh, Austin, Texas, my old stumping grounds, mm -hmm. Jacob's just to the north and west of Dallas and Grapevine, and Alyssa Andrews, another meteorologist here on our WBZ weather team, she's over in Indianapolis. So we have us all spread out to provide the best coverage for you guys here. And Depending on what traffic looks like, I don't know where I'm going to be. <laughs> I can't wait to see where you end up. <laughs> who, who knows where I'm going to be? I look at that live pick of the sun right now for up in New Hampshire. It looks pretty clear to me. Mm. Uh, let's hope it stays that way mm. about three or four hours from now. Um, no. But we hope to have video not only from yourself, but from Eric and Alyssa and Jacob tonight at, at 5. And we'll hope we on the stream this afternoon. Then we'll be on network from 2 to 3.30 and here locally at 3.30. So we'll have all kinds of eclipse coverage. Um, so we'll hope to see you all tonight. And uh, if, again, if you... If you're planning on taking a look, make sure your glasses are certified. Yes. Uh, otherwise, you know, maybe watch a stream online or something. Uh, do something safe, okay? Do something safe. Other than just looking at it with the naked eye. And if you're still in need of glasses, I know there are probably a lot of places are running out. If they've been sort of all scoffed up by now, but it's worth a shot for yeah. sure. So everybody enjoy the eclipse. Enjoy the eclipse, Jason. Um, go get them, buddy. Uh, and we'll see you all for tonight at 5 for a full wrap-up and hopefully lots of good video. Be safe, everybody. Have an awesome eclipse day.